Hey guys, let's get in the van. God, she's so cute. Hi. You know, sitting out here doing some work, cleaning this van out, really got me thinking. Got me thinking a lot about something I've said, something I said yesterday on people believing in the signs as opposed to having faith in something greater. Now I wonder, how many of y'all stumble and fumble and run into sticky situations because you just are following science instead of following the one true creator of this planet? My name is Mark Anthony Bose Jr. and I was born July 4th of 1986. Something very, very interesting that just really comes to me when I hang out and do what I do and watch these animals and watch these birds and watch these dogs and watch the trees and watch myself and watch other people. I come to realize this was all created, people. This didn't just show up. This didn't just happen to, uh, to be here. It didn't just manifest. It just something created it to, be, to make sure that we are here doing what it is that we're doing. And all these animals and all these creatures have a mission that they're on. And they all have a way to be able to be treated and taught that is not, I feel like, scientifically figured out and scientifically ran. That science is always trying to question and challenge and try to figure out some new stuff, think that they're the, they got all figured out and they know how to ways and they got it all dialed in. But I wonder, why is it that the more that we seem to lean towards science, the more that our world is getting more chaotic, just more chaos that's just absolutely destructive, destructive to the point of having absolute no control. I wonder, science was just always so right. How is it that your animals in your household and everything that you do and everything that you're around and everything that you consume that you eat and all the veggies that you eat and everything that's going on is just getting worse. It's not getting any better. It's not getting cleaner. It's not getting healthier. It's getting more processed to the point that it's just disgusting. But the science says that it's going to be better for you. The science comes to say that uh, we know how to be able to treat and be able to maintain and how to be able to raise these animals to make sure that they're going to be healthy and make sure that they're going to be good to go, make sure that they're going to be strong, make sure that they're going to be able to be the backbone for us to be able to make sure that we're constantly able to be out here to survive. But how is it that everything is just going downhill? I feel like we test and we, we, we believe the science so much that we're not actually really testing it is what I want to say. We're not actually like trying to actually figure out is it actually doing better or are we just believing what somebody has to say and we're just agreeing with it and moving forward without having a real good understanding of exactly what's going on around us. Because for me, I question science a lot. I question science on a day to day, all day, all day in reality with what it is that I continuously keep doing out here and what it is that I'm around. And I wonder how many of you also question science when someone says to you, hey, the moon it does this and it's supposed to be like that, that you look at it and you're just like, no, it's not doing that. How many of you have heard about something that a particular animal, animal is supposed to be like and is supposed to be and in, in living in its habitat and how its behavior is that you come to look at and study it and realize like, no, it doesn't do that. I feel like science is just on a mission of trying to figure out how to like please themselves without actually having a good understanding of how things work because if you believe in science, truly and 100% all, all, all the way committed through, I just feel like you don't understand who God is. And the more that you want to commit yourself to knowing that you got it all figured out through science, the more that you're really going to start to really not understand how things are working. So you try to just say, make up some stuff to figure out how to be able to make it work out. That if you got one out of a million that has success, you feel like that's success. And in my eyes, one out of a million is not success. That just means that you had one chance and you had one little fluke that things went out and worked pretty good for you. That's something that uh, me being a dog trainer, not just a dog trainer, animal trainer. I'll be getting my horse here soon enough so you can see what I could do with that as well. That, I noticed that when I work with these animals and I do what said science says that I run into failures, complications, struggles, strife. I run into a lot of issues because I feel like they're trying to put, so the general, they, they generalize. So they try to use the exception as the general rule where the exception is the exception. So when you have an exception when the science works for a dog training for instance, that's not the general rule that all of them are going to be able to work by. That there needs to be a, a better understanding of how it is that we are functioning and doing and being out here because we can't live off the exception. We got to live off the general rule. And I feel like a lot of us live in the world of exceptions and the one-offs and the, the little flukes that go down that I feel like that's why you're struggling in life because you're not actually looking at the overall of it. You're just looking at that slim, slight, one fraction of a percentage that happened to be good and you think that everything should be that way. I'm going to tell you that that's how science works and that's the way that they really try to portray the information to us that that's why I feel like you're struggling with everything that's going on around you because you're, you're thinking that you got that one unique, what is that, unicorn that, that you're working with, that you're doing, that you come to find out in the end that you don't. You got the general rule and the general rule, science doesn't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to work with that. They don't know anything about that. They don't have any studies on that. They don't know how to fix that. They don't know how to make it any better. 
And that's something for me to having a real good understanding of knowing who God is. That's where I feel like I have, say, success with working with these animals and doing what it is that I do because I challenge the science. I challenge it every single time with every single animal, with every single person that I see because I'm not going to do what is the, said say, normal. I, I'm going to come up with a tailored experience for that specific animal knowing that what it is and how it is and how it functions and, and what it's all about. Knowing how its natural behavior is. Not knowing what some science is going to say. If you do this, the dog is going to be happier. If you do that, the dog is going to be sad. If you do this, the dog is going to love you more. And it just still blows my mind. It's still a confusing thing that I know a lot of y'all get a little, little, little butt hurt when you see that I come in and I'm, I'm going to say that I'm I'm consistent and consistent in a way that you may think that I'm like mean. You may think that I'm just kind of like, like firm. I'm tough. A tough is a good word I like to use. And you come to realize like in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes, especially if I come to you on a day-to-day -day basis, that your dog likes me more than it likes you. Why is that? How is that possible that I come in very, very strict? I come in very, very, just very extremely consistent that if I say sit, it's sit. If I say to stay with me, it's stay with me. If I tell you to leave me, you better leave me. If I tell you to stay in the crate, you better stay in the crate. And I don't really give them a second chance. I'll give them a choice. I don't give them a treat. I don't even give them praise. I just tell them to do it. And I make them do it. And I, and I just say, this is what's going to be best for you right here, right now. It's just wild to me that when I do that, the dogs love me. The dogs look at me, they run straight to me. They have the choice of going to you or coming to me. And they always come to me because they're just like, I like that. I'm, I'm all about that. It's something interesting that science would say that's not the case. Science would say if you, you know, put a slip leash on a dog or you put a prong collar on a dog, you put an e-collar on a dog, that the dog is going to shut down. It's not going to want to work for you. It's not going to be around you. But in my case, 100% of the times when I put these tools on the dogs, they want to work for me even more. They're just even more pleased. They're even more just super, super excited. They get crazy jazzed up with knowing what it is that they need to do and knowing that it's very, very simple and knowing how so when someone is able to have a good understanding of knowing that the animal's an animal, that they're not a science project, they're a living, breathing creature from God, that they are able to learn and adapt and be able to maneuver with the new times and with the new things that are going on with how it is that we need to do and such such thing as fast track. That's the reason for a leash, to be able to fast track the training. That's the reason for a collar, to be able to fast track the training because I don't want to have to spend two to three years to be able to get your dog to act right. I want to spend two to three days to get them to know what it is I'm looking for. And for being a very, say, intelligent human being on this planet, I have the intelligence to know that I am able to communicate and teach to these dogs. And I can teach things to these dogs that really let them know what it is that I'm looking for without being mean to them, because I still have yet to have a dog that has just looked at me like in absolute terror, absolute just frustration, absolute like, I quit and I'm never gonna work for you anymore. I still have yet to run into that case. And I'm just not the guy that comes in and just drops $35 worth of treats on the floor that just says, please listen to me, please listen to me. No, I just tell the dog to do it. And I say, hey, you're a dog, I'm a human, you need to do what I'm telling you to do. And he does it and he loves it and he thrives off it. And he just absolutely embraces it and loves me even more for it. When he thinks or she thinks, the dog thinks that it can do whatever it wants and it has the, the free range of being able to make happen what it needs to make happen, that animal just turns into an absolute hot mess. Always anxious, always frustrated, always snapping, always barking, always growling, always doing this crazy stuff that I personally, like especially you see my dogs, they'll never do that. They just don't act that way. They're just not like that at all because they have the confidence knowing that I'm confident, knowing that I've got the skills required and needed to be able to make sure that they are able to do what it is they need to do. And it's not that I'm some special, unique individual that just has this magical being of gift of knowing how to work with animals. No, it's just that I've decided to put a lot of the social media away, put the TV shows, put the movies, put the drama, drop it all and just get outside and just start watching them. Just start studying them. Just start playing with them. Start interacting with them. Start doing stuff with them. That's just not the norm. Not what I've seen. I watch dog training videos and I'm like, I don't like that. Let me try this instead. And I just try it. See what happens. And I just watch the, the magic in reality start to happen. So when I start to question, I start to challenge, I start to push back at science, I realize things just get better, easier, smoother, nicer for me. But when I do the science, I'm telling you, I run into a lot of frustration. And I feel like the animals run into a lot of frustration. They run into frustration with not sure exactly what's going on here. When I'm trying to throw them a treat to try to tell them to stop doing something, they get very confused and or they get very smart because they're smart. That's why I love dogs so much because they're so intelligent that I can talk to them in such a way that I don't need to play games. I don't need to beat around the bush with it. I could just be straight and direct, very, very just honest and open with them and they totally understand what it is that I'm looking for. I don't need to manipulate them. I don't need to hide things from them. I don't need to tease them. I don't need to do any of that with them because they are so smart. But when you try to do that to them, they run into a very, very, very dangerous situation because 
the dog knows when you have something that it wants and the dog knows that it's got to do something when it when you have that thing that it thinks that it's going to be able to get from what it is that you have in your hand it's going to do what it is that you want to do but when you don't have it what happens your dog just doesn't work and doesn't perform doesn't make anything happen all you're doing is tricking the dog you're trying to manipulate the dog you can manipulate dogs to a certain point but in reality not really because if you don't follow through with keeping up with what it is that you need to do with them they're going to go back to absolute trash they're going to go back to doing what it is that, that they've always been doing that you need to learn the skills on how to be able to keep up with it and learning those skills is not something that takes years and years and decades and going to a fancy dog training school and learning any of this no it takes you just turning off one tv show that you watch a day turning off one 30 to 40 minute uh scroll time that you do on your social media day makes you turn off one hour and a half m movie that you're watching makes you miss one meal a week even just just fast just don't eat once a week just to have some extra time that you don't have to clean, you don't have to prep, you don't have to do anything, it just, you don't have to do, do nothing. That You just spend that time, you dedicate that time on just watching an animal, being fascinated with an animal. I'm not saying turn on the animal channel and the animal kingdom and get on your TV and watch more. No, I'm saying go outside and watch it for yourself with no commentary, with no, no one in your background and the noise is saying things to you that is like, oh, the animal does this because of this, the animal does that because of that. No, you just watch it and figure it out and just get a good understanding of what it is for your own self. That's what's going to make you turn into being someone to be able to have a good understanding of knowing how to work these animals. Because I've had several comments and several people say to me, oh, I'm not a fancy dog trainer, I'm not this, I'm not that. But I didn't go to a dog training school to, in reality, upgrade my dog training skills. I learned my skills before I went to that school. And I went to that school to realize that majority of what I'd learned in that school, I don't, I don't even use and utilize today. Because it's all based on science. It's not based on the real true understanding of what a dog is that God created these animals, God created us. And it's something, once you understand that, that simple fact right there, when you start to really study it, look at it in that, in that line of sight, when you just really pay attention and focus on that, that God created this dog here, he created this. This, this didn't just evolve from splitting from me and the dog turned off to something else and the trees and no, that he created this specific animal to be able to breed with itself, to be, a, be able to come this specific animal again. That every time this animal breeds, it breeds and it keeps on breeding the same. Like this is a mixed breed, that's a mixed breed. My Border Collie is technically a mixed breed, came from a bunch of mixes. And, but now if he breeds with another Border Collie, a Border Collie will come from it. But who would come from this? I don't know. Who would come from that? I don't know. But I guarantee you one thing, it'll be a dog. It won't be a human. It won't be a fish. It won't be a frog. It won't be a bird. It won't be a chicken. It'll be another dog. And that's something to me that just really lets me know that God is 100% real. And the more that you really start to look at these dogs with, with, that, with that concept and with that line of sight of having a good idea and a good understanding that it was created and made for a purpose, you're, I, think, I feel like you're really going to be able to have a good understanding of knowing how to work with them and knowing how to be around them. And that's just what I'm going to say with anything and everything out here, with human beings as well, that you're, you're going to start having a way better existence on this life. You're going to start having and experiencing way better, better things that, that keep on coming to you when you just, you just take 30 minutes a day. Just, just turn that show off. Turn the movie off. Turn the, turn the gossip off a little bit. And just stare at it. Study it for your own self to get a good understanding of what it is. I'm telling you, when you get a good understanding of what it is, you're going to have no choice but to be inspired to try to figure out some more. Then you're going to want to do some more. Then you're going to want to be more about it. And then when you start to do more and be more about it, you're going to start to have what you feel like other people have that you just get jealous and envious over. Because I don't know why people get so jealous with me, with a lot of my dogs, with what it is that I do on a day-to-day -day basis with them. Because you can have what I have. I don't sit down for 40 minutes a time and do a training session and do this. No, I just learned and have a good understanding of what they are. I learned what they're about. I learned how they are based on studying them and knowing that God created them. And once I had that, once I believed in that, then ideas and thoughts would come to me of how to be able to work with them and how to be able to manage them, how to be able to take care of them. Like even this dog here. This dog is, we're finally on a, <laughs> finally in a different stage of life today where she's not so terrified of me. She actually looks to me instead of looking to my other dogs now for some assistance and support. So somehow, however I've been able to figure out, not then able to figure it out, I know how I figured it out. I know the inspiration that I got to be able to figure it out. I know the training plan that I did to be able to get what it is to get her to, to understand what it is that I'm looking for because I treated her as a dog that she is and not a child and not a human and not anything else, not a chicken, not a, not a donkey, not any, I treated her as if she's a dog. And once I had a good understanding of knowing that she's a dog, I figured out how to be able to get her to do what it is that I need to do. Dog training school couldn't get me to figure that out. No one, no other dog trainer could have possibly been able to figure, help me to be able to figure out how to be able to get what it is that I got from her. It's just a good understanding of knowing what she is based on the creator creating it. And that for me is just super exciting. And that for me is something that I want more people to really just start to challenge your own self with your own life. That you see people with some stuff that you really, really want, you wish you could have, and then you start to get mad at it. People get mad at me when I have my dog. When they see my dog and how they act, and, and especially my Kahi when I'm out on walks and out in public, that people see that, they just look at that. I can see your face. I see your face. 
You wish and you wish and you wish. And I'm telling you, you can have and you can have and you can have better than whatever it is that I have. That dog, he was a savage beast when I got him. You could get you a nice dog that isn't that way that you had to work through all those uh, sticky situations and, and a lot of issues that he had and, and problems that he had and just already start off with a good clean slate with a nice animal. And you could have everything that you see anybody else have. It's just a matter of getting out and actually doing it and spending a little bit of time and, and getting it done instead of focusing on the fact that you just don't have and can't have and don't understand and can't be able to get. So one thing I really am going to say for a lot of people is if your dog is looking crazy, I just want to go specific to dogs right here right this second because if your dog is going crazy, if your dog is going wild, shut YouTube videos off with looking for dog trainers. Shut it off. Shut, like even it, me being for hire, being a dog trainer, trying to help people, don't even call me. Don't even call a dog trainer. Just sit down and watch your dog. Just study them. Pay attention to them or her and just see what it is that they do. See how they're functioning. See why they're doing what they're doing. If they're jumping on you, just sit down and, and watch them for a moment. Just say, you're jumping on me. I don't want you to jump on me. So how can I be able to figure this out? I'm telling you, if you just stay in a little bit of silence, you just watch them. You study them for a little bit. I, I, I'm almost going to say this, but I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say this. If you believe in God, I'm going to say this. I guarantee you something is going to come to you to get you to figure out how to be able to make sure that that dog doesn't jump on you anymore. I just guarantee it. A plan, a training plan is going to come to you. If you believe in who God is, I'm telling you that it will happen because that's God's animal and you are God's creature as well. And he's going to be able to give you the understanding of knowing how to be able to take care of that. Is he going to give you the understanding of knowing how to take care of an iPhone? Probably not because an iPhone was created by another man. It's super complicated and they like to make it complicated. iPhones are simple. But other phones, I would say, make it very, very complicated to just keep it so you act like you think you got something complex when you really don't have anything complex. So the animals on this planet, God really gives us a real good understanding of how to be able to work with it, how to be able to take care of everything that we have out here, how to make sure that we are ahead of the times and, and not behind the schedule with knowing how to be able to manage them and, and, and care for them. That's something that I feel like, I don't feel like, I know like, is just already pre-wired inside of us. That we need to just slow down and stop thinking that someone else has got the right science or someone else has got the right method or someone else has the right this. No, you got the right method for your own stuff in your own, in your own house. How I raise my dogs, how I care for my dogs, how I need my dogs. You don't need yours to be like mine. I'm telling you that. You may think that certain things that I have and certain, certain ways that I do with my dogs and certain things that they can perform and be able to make done is cool and cute and you would say that you would like that. But I bet you after about a week of you hanging with my dogs, you'd kind of be like, I don't like them. Where for me, I love all my dogs. I think every single one does exactly what I want them to do. I am very, very grateful for everything and every way that they're, they're able to do for me. Do I have some that I would like to get rid of so that I can bring in some more super high energy dogs to, to, to really just do some different type of work, like work. Like I got cows to move and, and to be able to protect and keep in. And I've got goats that I want to continue to keep getting again so that I don't have to worry about fences and do some stuff that I got work that I like to be able to push these dogs for. That I got more sniff and search work that I want them to be able to do. That if your kid is lost, I want my dog to be able to find him. If you're lost, I want my dog to be able to find him. If, if you lost your keys, I want my dog to be able to find him. If you lost some money, I want my dog to be able to find it for you. That's something to me that's just super interesting. If you got a bad heart, I want my dog to be able to sniff it out and say, hey buddy, I think you need to go to the doctor and be able to get some help. If you got a, a, a something, something cancerous going on inside of you, you got some, some diabetes about to start happening, I want my dog to run past you, stop, look at you, and then I want that dog to be able to say to you, he ain't gonna say to you, but I'll say to you at least, hey, you know, you might need to go get checked out because my dog is saying something that I don't think you, you're aware of yet. That's something for me that I think is super valuable that I want my dog to do that. Do you want your dog to do that? No. Do you want a dog that's going to be super high energy to be able to have to deal with all day to be able to do that? I like that. I'm, I'm ex I love being able to take care of my border collie. He's, you can't touch him. You touch him, he just goes super wild and super he's just, he's wild. He's so much fun. But is that fun to you? Probably not. Is this dog here something that you would be looking for that she just hang she hangs out? Everybody like this. I'm not going to say everybody, but everybody like this dog here. She's, she's so she's, she's adorable. She hang out. She's the type of dog that you sit down and watch a TV show and and just cuddle and snuggle and dress her up and hang out with her and just tell her that she's a sweet little girl, a sweet little May, and, and she's a cute little baby, and that's just all she is. But Johnny Man here, you probably wouldn't like Johnny Man. He, he tough. He, he's not tough in a way that he's going to try to chew on you, do nothing, but he tough in a way that he likes, he, he's boss man, and I like that. I like a lot about all of my dogs. And that's something that I want more and more people to just really, really start to get a good understanding of. You like your dog. That's why they're in your house. And since you like your dog, why don't you worry about trying to focus on getting your dog into a better place? And I'm telling you, the better place is going to start with you just sitting down and just studying them and just watching them. Just pay close attention to what you're doing. Stop. Get up 10 minutes. And if you take 30 to 40 minutes a day of just stopping, I'm not saying training. I'm not saying do anything. I'm just saying watch them. 
just study it. Just pay attention. Just get on your patio, get on your porch, get on your, get in your anorak, an, get, get in your chairs, get in your swing set, get on, get on, get outside and just watch them. Just watch them. Just watch what they do. See what they do. See, watch them go sniff something. Watch them go prance around. Watch them go bark at something. Watch, just watch them. Just, just really just stare at them. And you're really going to start to understand who they are and what they are. Because I feel like a lot of us just don't do that. We think that they should be perfect, that they should just be, do what you say. When you say no, they should just understand that. You say do this, and they, they should just do that. That's not how they work. That's not anything at all about how they are. They're a challenge to us. They're a test to us. They're something to build us up. There's something to be able to bring some more excitement to us, not a disastrous thing to us. And I, and I feel like that's something that a lot of people run into a sticky situation with. Their dog is kind of disastrous to them, whether it's just running the house and it's destroying them. Or I feel like just, just watch them, just study them. I feel like that's my challenge to you. That's a challenge of getting a good understanding of get away from the science. The science doesn't know. The science works for the exception. It doesn't work for the general rule of everything. And once people start to have a good understanding of that, I think that you're going to start having more success with your dog. And more success with your dog because majority of stuff that you see on the YouTube that people are doing with the dogs, they're, they're the exception. They have that dog that's that exception. They have that dog that just will do anything for treats no matter what's around. How many of y'all in your house, y'all dog does that? I'm just going to say. When, as soon as you have that treat out, as soon as there's a squirrel out, you think that dog's going to go to that treat or to that squirrel. The exception goes to the treat. That's what y'all see on YouTube all the time. The exception. You don't see the, the normal. You don't see how they always work and how they always function. Because I know that for a 100% fact with all three of my dogs. Food is valuable, but man, let me see a chicken, and that chicken is way more valuable. Let them see a duck, and that duck is way more valuable. And that's something that a lot of us really need to get a better understanding with and having a good, uh, good, good insight with that. You keep seeing the exception, and you keep thinking that your dog should be a part of that. And they're not. They're part of the, the general, regular, normal. They're not the, the top 10 tier. They're not the, the, the ones. They're right in the middle. And right in the middle is the majority. And the majority is what you really need to start to get a better understanding with how to be able to work and how to be able to manage your dog. With that said, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, God, for being able to allow me to continue to keep doing what it is I'm doing. Be able to give me this van to be able to drive around and people call it my, my little uh, doggy, doggy school bus van. It's kind of cute. I appreciate that. That uh, I like to be able to maneuver and move the way I need to move and be able to help the people that I need to be able to help and keep on working on my dogs the way I like to work on with my dogs and, and keeping this van nice and clean and keep me to get the inspiration. I always keep it clean. Like you would never know that I ride around dogs all the time in this van. In reality, when you look at it, I keep it crispy clean at all times. I don't like a lick of hair in there. And I'm so thankful to be able to have the, the persistence to be able to continue to keep doing it. I know that's just through the grace of God to just be able to keep me on my toes, to be able to keep me excited, to be able to keep me motivated, to be able to do what it is I need to do. That if I was just my own human, my own self, it would be sloppy. It would be dirty. But I got God on my side to let me know what it is I need to continue to keep doing and working on to keep on bettering myself and better everything, better everybody else around me. And it's something that I just really want to be able to, to help more people with, just having a better understanding of your own stuff. Start to trust that God is the one that created it, and God is the one that's going to be able to give you the understanding of how to be able to fix it and make it better. That science, I'm telling you, science is steering us wrong, people. Science isn't, isn't, science is messing up. They're not really sure what's going on, so when they don't know, they just start to guess. When they start to guess, they start to force it until it works. And then when it works, they say, ah, aha, see, it worked. And it's like, well, if it works for one out of the million, did it really work? That's something that I really want a lot of people to really start to test and challenge and try to get a better understanding with on their, everything that they see on a day-to-day. -day. Test, test the science to see, is it really going to work out for you or is it just working out for everybody else? Thank you.